initially, I think I had them in the actual superhero costumes, but they didn't want to show um, Wanda's full costume before the show, you know, before it was in the actual show. So we decided to do it um, in the Halloween costumes instead. Like as a kid, I remember thinking I would love to have quarters on the Enterprise and just live there. Just would love it, live in that future. I've got a reputation for doing it because I've done like Flash Gordon, The Thing, or the John Carpenters, Transformers, Ghost in the Shell. So it's kind of like that sort of old movie. I've got another, I've got a Blu-ray coming out for another old, old 80s movie that I love as well. On today's Engaging Marketeer podcast, I'm interviewing somebody quite exceptional. Uh, his name's Matt Ferguson, and he is a designer of posters that you may well have seen. He's designed posters for Marvel, for Star Wars, for exceptional movies, and for Transformers. He's designed movies for Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, Halloween, Flash Gordon, Transformers the Movie, The Thing, Escape from New York, you name it, he's done it. So I'm going to be talking to Matt about how he got into this industry and what the process is he uses to create these iconic works of art. For a living, you're effectively doing what many people would dream of being able to do and when they were children would have grown up wanting to be able to do. What what were you doing as a as a child when you were in school and you first started art? Um just I just, or just like drawing, so I guess my early memories of school and art was I didn't really do very well in class. But I did used to teach a lot of other kids how to draw turtles. So I always had a sort of thing about drawing things that I like, that I liked. So that when I've got an interest in it is when I, it best comes out, I think. So was that realistic turtles or was that... Teenage Mutant Ninja, Ninja Turtles. Ninja Turtles. Yeah. Uh, so you didn't have any turtles yourself as pets, did you? No. No. I did go down that craze at one point and have some of them, but my mum got rid of them because she thought they was bringing on some sort of breathing issue, which is ridiculous. So I, I, I lost turtles as a result of that. Um, so you, so in school, did you not? were you not sort of um, considered good art in your class then? If, if you... Uh... Not really. I failed. Um, I failed art at school. So I failed GCSE. Yeah, and A level as well. Oh right. When you say failed, what sort of grades are we talking about there? Like E. So not a fail, fail, but not not great. So with with when you did your GCSE, did your your teacher encourage you to do A level? Um. Not really. I just always wanted to. I just wanted to do it because I like drawing. So I saw it as an excuse to make pictures and stuff. <laughs> but then at school, you've got to kind of like show your work in, you know, to get a grade. Yeah. And I've never been one for that. I just sort of like make pictures. So. And you, you've got to do the stuff that they want you to do as well. In a way, yeah. It's because it's to to so it can be marked, isn't it? It's like things like technique and. The process of doing things and I've always just kind of like just done whatever I feel is right instead of what you're supposed to do and what, I guess what's what sort of mediums were you using at the time uh well that would be way before digital I remember when that all started to come in at, at school when I was doing um a levels of when we the school first got like a digital camera we started with photoshop in class and stuff but uh you know it would have just been hand painting pencils that sort of thing you know uh, did you ever experiment with sort of oils and acrylics? Yeah, yeah, I used to paint proper paintings and things. And what yeah. what what did you prefer as a medium at the time? Um, I've always just liked pens, so just working with pens and pencils, so just ink. So I imagine when when you made the transition into digital, that was a, a big thing for you. Uh, it was because I I started out doing it more sort of uh, as a hobby editing computer games and stuff so changing textures in video games and things like that so that's kind of like where i started with digital and photoshop and then that led on to doing posters because you learn these techniques on how to make things inside photoshop because mm. people think photoshop is like editing a photo mm. but you can actually draw and paint and use it much more like organically so you can build things within photoshop 
if you've got the talent. I don't really know. Yeah, it just took, <laughs> I've, been, I've been doing it for like twenty years. So yeah, you, yeah. You, you need the talent to be able to do it. Photoshop can do great things, but you still need to be able to draw. You still need to. Yeah, play. it's not the tools; it's the person. Yeah. That, and it's not the medium. It's like if people think Photoshop's cheating or tracing's cheating or this or that. There's no cheating. There's no rules. It's just what if the end product looks good. Hmm. And it's good. It doesn't matter how you made it. So how did you manage to get your, your first professional commissioned work for, for posters? That was through Marvel. I did um, an Avengers picture for fun on, and put it online. So it had been 2011, 2012, and they just saw it and I guess liked it. So then hired me to um, make more posters. <laughs> Simple as that. Yeah. It's, I was really lucky. I was just in the right place at the right time. I, I've, I've interviewed quite a few people who've had sort of stories where that, where they are in the right place at the right time. Yeah. But you still need to, because obviously you still need to be able to put, put the work in to have that talent, to have that. Well, I still make the picture, obviously, that yeah. got seen, but I think a lot of the way things have gone, like back in the old days, I'm assuming you would have needed like an agent and you'd have needed credentials and you needed this and that to get noticed by a company or to be able to get your foot in the door. But since like the advent of social media, it sort of changed a little bit. And that's when I sort of came into this field was because of social media, really, because I posted the poster online and it got seen by uh, the film studio. So it's kind of like different, I think, nowadays. You can you can get noticed and I can work from here in England. I don't have to live in America or anything like that. It's, mm. it's quite good in that regard. So is, is the work itself, is it coming from America with Marvel? A lot, most of the time, yeah, yeah, from the film studios in America. Okay. So where online are you, you posting it, where you got the exposure? Back then, when I first got the exposure, it was uh, at this website called Tumblr. I don't know if you remember Tumblr. I do. And yeah. It was uh, image-based. So that appealed to artists. So when that was new, lots of artists went on there and you would post stuff and it would just get spread around viral. And I'm guessing that's a good way for a company to recruit people is to just look uh, on a website like that or or nowadays Twitter and things like that and um, you just see the see the work and then you reach out to them. So this this picture that you, you created, it was a, a fan-made poster, I take it? Yeah, that's how I started out, just doing sort of fan art because I love these things anyway. Hmm. And I just had like this urge to do it. I remember I just, it was, I don't even know if the trailer had come out for that first Avengers movie. Um, it might have just been that there was a teaser poster and I was like, I want to do something like more my own sort of take. But uh, I just did it. And I, it, was really, it was a strange thing to do really because I hadn't really done anything like that. Mm. But it just worked. Yeah, it really well. People noticed it very quickly. So had you been drawing or, or creating art with Marvel characters before that? Was that just the first thing you did? No, that was the first thing. <laughs> so the first time you created a Marvel character picture, you got hired by Marvel? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> first time I put one publicly online, definitely. Wow. Yeah. Wow, that's, that's incredibly fortuitous, isn't it, to be? It's really it's quite... Crazy how lucky I was with that, I think. So what what stuff had you been doing at that point before you decided, right, I'm going to I was just like making stuff almost for fun for myself and just doing experimental sort of pictures and things and like just sort of... I was working in a shop at the time, so I was just doing it as a hobby just to be sort of creative, I guess. Mm. And I made my wife, she was my girlfriend then, which is my wife now, I made her a picture of Samurai Jack her birthday and her sister was like that's really good you should do more of that sort of thing and then I was like yeah, I suppose I could and I, I, I wasn't aware of like the fan art scene or any of these alternative movie posters or anything like that so I but it's, you very quickly get absorbed into that online community mm. and then it just sort of snowballs I think if if people want to like your work and reshare it. So mm. so if, if you didn't, if you weren't aware then of the online community and sort of the fan art 
scene around at the time. What influences were you getting? I mean, were you, were you big into comics? I've always been big into comics, yeah, and just like just everything really. You, you, I think you're influenced by everything around you. So I used to get Empire Magazine, and they had a feature in there that was like a different take on film posters or their own take on film posters every month. I used to like that and thought, well, that's a cool sort of thing to do, your own take on something. Um, and, yeah, just everything, films. Films themselves have always influenced me as well, like the way my favourite films are, like, shot and the way they look and stuff. And obviously that bleeds through into the work, especially if you're working on that film. Mm. You want it to evoke the same feeling of the film. And, like, the best films, they're kind of, like, set out, like, really good pictures anyway with the compositions and stuff. Yeah. Well, speaking of compositions, I mean, one of the most recent posters I've seen of yours was for the, the Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness. Because you, yeah. you did two posters for that film, didn't you? I did. And the one I'm, I'm thinking of was the, the Shattered Glass poster. Yes. Yeah, okay. And there was a lot of information in there revealing elements of the film that wasn't necessarily available in the trailer. How much did you know about the film before you were making the poster? Uh, not very much. You get um, select scenes, maybe, um, like pre-visualisation stuff, photographs, obviously, of like the sets and costumes and things to make sure that if you're using them that they're going to be accurate. And then, it, like, it's just the general synopsis. But when you're doing a poster like that that's before the release of a film, it it doesn't have to be fully accurate to the movie, and it's better to be slightly more abstract. And it's like you know, a teaser poster, so it's meant to get people interested in going to see the film. It's like a different approach, in a way. Um, and then the shattered glass, I don't know where that came from, really. There's a there's the window in the trailer, the window, it was it wasn't really shown, but it was kind of hinted at that the that Doctor Strange's window was gonna smash. And I liked the idea of that and it as a framing device. So initially to start off with it, which ended up in the US poster, it had the um window, yeah. the framing device. And then, you know, as you're working, you sort of go, actually, I'll just pull that away and make it simpler but I kept the glass because I liked that the shards of the character so, yeah. so how, how do you create a composition like that because that is a very elaborate way of I imagine very technically difficult way of doing uh, it it's just sort of organic yeah just sort of chip away at it so you have your initial idea that will be a scribble like literally like really basic maybe a bit of a collage um, and then just chip away and just make each element. And then when you're working digitally with Photoshop, obviously you can mask off areas of art, which when you've got layers like that with the glass, you can just make it so that one shard of glass is the only bit that's affected. And then whatever you put there is only in that area. Mm. But then it's easier to sort of just go, so I'd make a full picture of Doctor Strange, full picture of um, the zombie Doctor Strange put them in and then when you move them around within that space they're only in the, the glass but they're effect you know you can move it and there's it's better when I'm making a poster to make more than you actually see because yeah. stuff moves around and you change it so yeah that's kind of like so what, what resolution are you doing this at because I've, I've done some photoshop work and you're doing this potentially for huge print jobs so they are 20 these ones are 27 by 40 inch posters right uh, and I usually do them like 600 DPI. Okay, that's big. So very big files. The files are usually around about 15 gigabytes. Right. Huge. That's massive. Yeah. Computers a little bit, gets a little bit chuggy towards the end. Because I like to have that control over every element, so you've got to keep them all separate. So that you, have, you end up with like a 1,000 layers in Photoshop right. or more. But it's, So you've got that control over each separate element, and you can move stuff around. That's the kind of like the key, I think. And have you got any sort of favourite go-to effects that you like to use in Photoshop for creating textures or colours? Um, not really, no. I just sort of do, do what works each time. That's so the only so, way so, I can so you, you don't have a set style, it's just everything is a clean slate then? Pretty much, yeah. There'll be things that you pull in, like um, 
I've got like a, some background textures for a paper texture, for example, if you want to have a sort of papery texture. But no, it's 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 pretty much new each time, unless it's like the same film and you're doing a new poster. You can I can reuse like certain assets and stuff obviously because it doesn't make sense to do things twice. Mm. But also it's it, it's good to to start new each time because then you get something new each time. And in terms of the actual characters themselves, say the Doctor Strange uh, zombie character, mm-hmm. are you drawing that from scratch? It is a mixture of all sorts of things. Uh, with when I'm doing a character, I will it, if I've got the photo reference, I'll use photo reference as a base, and basically draw over the top of it. Because especially when you're working in a tight deadline, people don't realise. Obviously, like you've not got all the time in the world. You've got like a couple of weeks, mm. you know, to make these things. Um, so I would do that, or sometimes a bit of three D. So, for example, not on the, not on this Doctor Strange poster, but on other posters, if there's a certain lighting mood that I want, and I can't quite figure it out in my head how that light would fall, then you can I get a basic three D model, throw a light up in the three D program, and you, for, on a face, for example, you would then get the light in the side of it, and then that's your reference for that. Would that be an effect that you used on your Thing poster, for example? I did use 3D on the Thing, yeah. yeah, yeah. Because that's got a, a really accurate Kurt Russell on the front, which looks like you've drawn it, but it looks too accurate to have been drawn. It's drawn, and it's also photo, and it's also through several rounds of like lightness approval as well, because you have to go through lightness approval. And then the talent, in this case, Kurt Russell's people, say yes or no, <laughs> and they want it a certain way. So he did actually look differently to start with on, on that poster. Uh, well, as, as you've touched on that, I was going to ask what, what's Marvel like to work with in terms of getting approval? I mean, how many rounds of amends are you having to do, say, on the Doctor Strange poster? Not a huge amount, like two two or three sets of feedback, maybe. Yeah. Um, it's just like uh, getting it to a place where everybody's happy. You know, because uh, they've got a full marketing like um, layout that they're going to do, and they've got a poster here, a poster there, and they want to make sure that everything is uh, not the same, but in terms of marketing, like the don't really know the way to describe it, like just sort of like all uh, approved and working in tandem so that it, yeah. it works. So, but it's. Yeah, it's usually about one or two rounds of feedback for changes. That sounds incredibly simple, to be honest with you. It is quite simple, really. My brief usually is, um, can you do as a poster for this? (laughs) And then they send me a load of reference and stuff, and then I come up with something. Wow, it's easy. That's the best best way. If you you have your hands tied, then it's harder to sort of just come out of left field and come up with something that might be different, you know? Mm. That's the other thing. So it's it's a good way to work, I think. I suppose so, yeah, because, I mean, in our company, we build websites for people, and if the client is too specific on what it is they're looking to do, it might be something that isn't best for them, and they end up with a kind of a hybrid that doesn't quite do what they need it to do. Yeah, it's, it, exactly. Because yeah. they've been too dictatorial with it. Um, one of your, your posters that I've done that is a particular favourite of mine is the WandaVision. The WandaVision yeah. with the, 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 t- the TV set. It's a fabulous composition the way you've got the reflection of them as their let's say comic book characters also their halloween costume characters below mm-hmm. it how did you come up with that as a concept well it's ripping it's me ripping my own self off really <laughs> in a way the best influences uh, when stranger things first came out i did a post of stranger things which was the upside down so it was the ground the kids on the bikes and then directly underneath was your demogorgon thing and then um, the little kid running away from it and so they're like running in tandem and neither side obviously knows what's going on uh, and i did that and that was really 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 popular when that came out um to the point where you know like netflix have used it in marketing and so on and so forth um and it's that idea of the 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 two things being a reflection in a way. So that's what that was. And then 
you know, it's a natural progression to go, well, they're in the TV. So I'll do the TV show version of them like that. Like initially, I think I had them in the actual superhero costumes, mm. but they didn't want to show um, Wanda's full costume before the show, you know, before it was in the actual show. So we decided to do it um, in the Halloween costumes instead. No, that's a really good. It's it's a real powerful image because because the Halloween costumes are based on the original comic costumes. Well, it? I liked. I really liked getting to do that. Yeah, because it's like the proper. What I see is the proper costumes. Yeah. <laughs> proper costumes. Yeah, and of course you've done Star Wars posters as well. I have. Which I'm I'm wearing a Star Wars T-shirt right now. Massive fan of that as well. How what, how did you? Well, I presume that was Marvel stroke Disney getting involved with you for that one. Um, when I initially started doing Star Wars stuff. Um, it was through a gallery in the US called Bottleneck Gallery, who I work with a lot in terms of doing art prints and stuff. And we did some official Star Wars uh, prints through this company called Acme as well. Um, and then that's all official. It goes through Lucasfilm and stuff. So then I guess they saw it. And then since then, I've done some more like uh, through Disney and Lucasfilm, like um, studio stuff. So I've done like Solo. Empire Strikes Back was the big one. Actually, yeah, I did Empire Strikes Back. And yeah, and and you've got obviously got a Guardians poster referencing Empire Strikes Back. Yeah, that was a that was a one that hit really big online as well. People really like that. It's a phenomenal poster, though. I, I love a mashup. I do love a mashup. Yeah, but it, for me, is it's it's less because I'm just you know aping something else that somebody else did. <laughs> So I've not really been that creative there. <laughs> it's fun though. It's like I bet. a cheap shot, isn't it? <laughs> it's fun though, I bet. Yeah, it's fun to try and like make it look like that, but still using the new uh, characters and stuff. So, do you have influence? Um, so, I've, I've spoken to a lot of comic artists, and they've got influences, obviously, that they are they derive from, and, and they they try to follow, and, and sometimes that influences their art. Do you have influences in poster designing? For this. Oh yeah, huge. Yeah, Bob Peake is a huge influence on me. Um, he was a poster designer who painted a lot of really classic film posters. My favourite being the Star Trek, um, the motion picture poster. Oh, with the coloured lights coming down. Yeah, which actually is an influence on the Wonder Vision poster hmm. composition and also the colours. Yeah, I wanted that rainbow effect, so that's kind of like something that I like to look at and go back to. And then there was another poster artist called John Alvin. Um, he did some really, really, really good posters. He did like the ET poster, um, this one. Oh, Empire of the Sun. He did the Empire of the Sun poster, which is a really, really good image. And it's like he, he was quite graphic and um, very influential on me. So yeah. Okay. Um, and I didn't know who these people were. I mean, lots of people know who Drew Struzan is, but like, I just saw the posters as a kid and they had influenced me. And then now, as I've got older and like people have given me art books and stuff with them in, I'm like, oh, it's that, oh, that person did like half of my favorite posters. Mm. So then I know their name and they're, they're an influence on and, and it all slots into place then. Yeah, 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 definitely. And there'll be kids out there now realizing who you are and how you've done most of their favorite posters. I don't know about that. Oh, I'm, I'm sure it's, I'm sure it will. Because obviously, one thing we have to talk about is Transformers. Yeah, you have a couple of Transformers behind you right now. Only a few, yeah. A, a soup song of Transformers. I can see a stuffed unicorn head on the chair yeah. behind you as well. You are a big Transformers fan. Huge, Transformers huge, fan. huge. And you got to work on Transformers posters as well. Yeah, I did a bunch of work for the thirty-fifth anniversary of um, Transformers the movie. Which is like my favorite Transformers thing as well. So that's like, that was my entryway into Transformers. My brother, I've got two older brothers, and they had uh, some toys and they used to watch the cartoon, but I never really liked the, the cartoon that much. But when the movie came out, we, we rented that on video every week. It must have been years. And uh, yeah, I know it off by heart. So the film is, is me, like the, the, the thing I like best about Transformers. Yes, it probably would have been cheaper to buy the film, I think. Probably, yeah, but, it, you know, you could only rent back then, so it was like, quit every week, <laughs> run the movie. 
So take it back, rent it again. Yeah. So how did you get into to doing the Transformers the movie poster? I did some work for um they were manga at the time. They've, they've changed names now. I think they're crun- crunchy roll now, I think. Um anyway, so manga do like a lot of anime films. So like they put in the UK they put out like Akira and Ghost in the Shell. I did some work for Ghost in the Shell, uh for them. And then it was just sort of like I guess that went well and they were like, Oh, do you do you like Transformers? And I was like what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> and then that just snowballed and I ended up doing work for them. I ended up doing work for the US version as well. And then some some stuff for um, this company called Savvy as well. So I just did loads. I was just like, yeah, I'll do that. I'll do that. I'll do that. I'll do that. Transformers, give, give, give. And, I just wanted to do it all. So. And what, what was it like working with Transformers? Because it, it could have been that you ended up killing your passion. With the Hasbro people, they were good. Yeah. They were all right. Yeah. There's only a few things where, like, you know, there's things where I'm, like, going on a really deep dive into, like, things for the film, and they're a bit, like, I'm not sure, like, general audiences will would appreciate that, and I'm like, I need to have it. <laughs> I was obsessed with having hot rod fishing on, the, <laughs> on it, and I think they're a bit like, mm, it's good, but we'd rather have something a bit more action-packed. I'm like, no, hot rod fishing. <laughs> Even the hot rod MP came with a fishing rod. Yeah. So, but no, it's, um, again, it's like that sort of back and forth because you've got to imagine they're trying to sell it to um, just people that haven't seen the thing as well as making it sort of collectible. So it's like a fine line. So I just sort of did my dream Transformers pictures, really. That's all I did. Just went crazy. So the the one poster um, I'm thinking of, it's on your, your website. It's got... Hot Rod becoming Rodimus Prime, opening the Matrix, mm-hmm. and it's got Optimus and Megatron underneath having a, a a battle to end all battles. Yeah. What was the influence behind that? Because that's a different composition, I think, to any poster I've seen before. Well, I just wanted to have Rodimus Prime doing that because it's just a cool central thing to have. I like those sort of compositions where you've got like a big central image and it all pans out. And then the fight at the bottom was kind of influenced by the UK Transformers poster, the original one. Mm. Um, but it, it, it that that had Optimus Prime big, and then Megatron, and they were fighting. And that's my memory of that film, really, because I used to rent the video every week. It was on the cover, and I just just loved it. So I wanted to sort of try and get a a feeling of that into the artwork a little bit. So that's what that was. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you there. That that's my favourite poster as well. The the American video cover, which I think had more Ultra Magnus on it. Yeah, it's not it's not as good. It's not. No, I mean it's action packed, but it it doesn't have that that iconic look for me. I mean the the original video cover, which I think was Video Gems when it came out in the UK. Yeah, so I, I remember the Video Gems logo on it. Even the colour of it, that sort of deep purple. Yeah, in the background. I've still got it. It's on the, on the shelf behind me. Have oh, you got the VHS? The, yeah. Oh, fantastic. Because you had to recreate, or because I sent that poster to you, the scan, remember, and I, you yeah. needed it for the actual uh, 35th anniversary DVD release because you were doing it as a poster. Included. Yeah, I wanted to. I wanted to put in some of the old posters um, as like bonuses for people, but on top of that, I also wanted the. Uh, the sleeve to be reversible so you've got my artwork on the outside that's the new artwork but then if you reverse the sleeve it's like the original video cover but obviously it's like a different ratio with a blu-ray box to a video so i had to basically sort of remake it and that scan was really very helpful in that regard and then for, for the us one they, they'd already done a um sort of a remaster of the us one sheet artwork that was really high res and i used that to do the reverse there. So in the US, the US version, the reverse sleeve is a recreation of the original US video. And in the UK, the reverse sleeve is a recreation of the UK video, which was just me being like obsessed about wanting to do it like that. And they were like, if you really want to, it's a lot of extra work. And I was like, I'm doing it. Yeah, no, it was absolutely the right thing to do. Absolutely the right thing to do. Um, so, you're going to get going along to TF Nation. 
Yeah. Uh, which the date this podcast goes out, uh, it is on today, so you can come along and meet Matt at TF Nation. Uh, you may be hanging around in the bar, possibly, on the Friday. More than likely. More than likely. Fantastic. <laughs> And you'll be signing and, and greeting people on the... Sign in, there's going to be a new poster. Um, oh. A new poster. Do we know about this? Has this been announced no. yet? Well, I suppose this goes out on the Friday of the... Yeah, the new nation, poster. So, so that will be announced by, by the point you see this. Fantastic. Um, so that's the a poster version of the of the Shout factory artwork, basically. Oh. But I've done a slight twist on it as well and, and done a UK-styled border and stuff it's quite fun oh fantastic so that's going to be um, available to, yeah. to buy print yeah uh and then there's going to be i'm going to have the little pop shot things you know, the, the profile the portrait pictures that i do so oh i've seen the one of megatron optimus yeah, yeah. yeah. and I'm, I'm putting together a little sketchbook of the sketches that i did leading up to this because with transformers you don't have like I was saying earlier on about photo reference, with Transformers, you don't have photo reference. Yeah. So I was like, you've got the character model sheets and you've got, um, you can't go off the toys, obviously, because they're not the same. And then you've got stills from the film. And that, if you ever freeze frame that film, it's just like, what were they drawing? Yeah. Because the animation works when it's moving, but when it's frozen, they usually just look really weird. So I, I had to just, I made it all from scratch. That poster was a, a, an awful lot more work in that regard because everything was made from scratch. Oh, wow. So mm-hmm. I've got a sketch sketchbook of some of the sketches that I did. So is that a sketchbook that's going to be printed for people to buy or sketchbook? Uh, yeah, be printed, yeah. Because obviously I don't have the physical sketches because I just do them in the computer, just yeah. sketch digitally. So. Oh, fantastic. And um, what, what experience have you had going to conventions so far? I've done plenty of conventions. So every year, well... Last few years, obviously, not so much. Um, I do Thought Bubble uh, Comic Book Convention, which is a really good independent comic book convention. London Film and Thingy My Bobby Comic Convention. I mean, they're all called the same thing. New York Comic Con. I do that quite a lot as well. So, yeah. But I've never done a specific. There's always been general. So it's like, you know, comics or films and stuff in general. But this is going to be the first one. That's specifically for something. It's Transformers, which is what I like. So, quite interested in finding out what that's going to be like. <laughs> have you been to one before? No. Oh wow. That's the other thing. I'd, I'm going to have to bring a lot of spending money because I'm assuming there's a lot of Transformers for me to buy. <laughs> there, there absolutely is going to be a lot of Transformers for you to buy. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I, I usually come away with a car full. Uh, so <laughs> it, it gets, yeah, it gets pretty bad. It gets pretty bad at times. Um, and there's the Forge as well, which is artists creating their own creations for you to buy. So there's things like badges and and um, right. posters and, and paintings, and sometimes there's clothing. You know, it's it's guys who aren't doing things officially but want to be. Maybe they're in the position you were when you first started. So yeah. that that's definitely going to be worth checking out because there's some cool. really, really cool stuff in there. Um, what's your favourite thing then about going to to conventions? If you actually get a chance to look around yourself, um, well, I'm usually I've always been working. So I'd, the good thing about when you're working at a convention is obviously you're in before people come in. So I tend to like walking around like an hour before it opens up, and you can go talk to people, and there's not like throngs of of people everywhere especially like new york comic-con because it's just like like a million people just go through the doors and it's just madness Mm. so to go around that before it's uh, actually open to the public is really like quite a privilege and you get to sort of actually look and talk to people and stuff because otherwise you just run off your feet yeah no i can imagine i can imagine what it's like um, what what projects are you got coming lined up that you're going to be working on next, if you're allowed to even say? Uh, a couple of Marvel projects. Cool. Yeah. Uh, are, are we are we on... allowed to know what they are? No. No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> couple of Marvel projects. Okay. Couple um, of Marvel projects, right? Um, 
I'm working on some new Blu-ray stuff that's going to have posters with it as well for some films, which is quite exciting. Big, biggish movies. Um, are these are these biggish new movies or classic old, movies? Old movies. I seem to have like fallen into this, with, especially with the Blu-ray stuff. Yeah. Of doing like new new artwork for old films. I guess people, the, the companies that are hiring me. Mm. I've got a reputation for doing it because I've done like Flash Gordon, The Thing, the John Carpenter's Transformers, Ghost and Shell. Mm. So it's kind of like that sort of old movie. I got another. I've got a Blu-ray coming out for another old old eighties movie that I love as well. So you can't tell us any of these. No, <laughs> absolutely got it. NDA'd up. NDA'd yeah. up. That's I can't a say. Yeah, Flash Gordon is one of my all-time favourite movies. Yeah, same. I love Flash Gordon. I lo- absolutely love it. I love the soundtrack. I love Queen as well. I've I've met Sam J. Jones a couple of times. Well, the other one, that I've, the other DVD I've got coming out is has got a Queen soundtrack. No. Well, we know what that is then. <laughs> <laughs> They've only done two. Yeah, <laughs> that's Highlander. <laughs> yeah, oh. probably. Yeah, yeah, but you can't confirm or deny that. Can't confirm. Can't or deny confirm that. or deny that. But Queen's only done two soundtracks. Queen are good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. We've got an exclusive accidentally. But if anybody asks, you didn't say it, so No, I didn't say anything. You... Yeah, no, um yeah, Flash Gordon, I absolutely love. Absolutely love that movie. Yeah. Yeah, so do I. Uh, is there any films though or T V properties or cartoons or anything that you would love to work on but haven't? I want to do I want to do Star Trek. There's the there was the new Star Trek, the motion picture director's edition 4k uhd remaster is like a big mouthful mm. um and i really wanted to do that work for that to the point where i was like just pouring at everybody i knew in the industry just shouting on twitter at random star trek people <laughs> <laughs> but it didn't happen so oh. i didn't get that one sadly so- well that's not to say i won't get it in the future when they do another yeah. 4k 8k <laughs> like a remaster thing. Would any any Star Trek property be good for you, or is it? it I like the, the original picture? series. Um, the original movies is the ones that are key, I think. Um, and then I do. I probably would go Next Generation as well. I quite like Star Trek Next Generation. Otherwise, not as not as bothered. I've, I have actually watched it all, mm. all of Star Trek, several times because that's another one of my favorite things. But the the ones that stick out is the Captain Kirk ones um, and the Next Generation. They just seem to be of another level of quality. I think. Hmm. Have you seen Strange New Worlds yet? I've been watching it because we got Paramount Plus, and that is actually entertaining and very much like almost more like the original series than mm. like your next generation and stuff. It's, yeah, it's very, yeah, um, I, was, I was very surprised by it. It's good. 60s, it? Yeah. It's good. Yeah, it's really the good. sets are absolutely incredible as well. They just look at, so the thing I always said about Star Trek that I really like, um, is it's like somewhere where you'd want to live. But like as a kid, <laughs> I remember thinking I would love to have quarters on the enterprise and just live there. Just would love it. Live in that future. And I think that's something that's kind of gone away a little bit in the recent ones because they're very heavy sci-fi action orientated. Mm. But then Strange New Worlds, they've brought that back. The 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 Enterprise, you think, I would actually like to go live on that ship. It's cool. They've got really nice quarters. Yeah, and they've made a big thing of Pike's living quarters, haven't they? With yeah, it's just nice. It's like a nice place. He There's parties and cooks for people there. Yeah, yeah, it's like the... It's a future where where you would want to want to be, and it's not like dystopian or anything. It's it's nice. Mm. So yeah, I have been enjoying that so far. So if anyone is listening, Matt very much wants to do a Star Trek poster, original series, next generation he'll take. But it <laughs> <laughs> original series or motion picture would be ideal. Yeah. Okay. And have you got any advice for anybody who's in the position you were in? back when you started, and to how they could actually get into this industry if they wanted, not that you need the competition? It's kind of impossible to give advice because everybody's experience is different with this, especially nowadays. The only real advice I can say, because I don't know if people's individual sort of skills or whatever, or what they can do or what they can't do, is go on what, is, is go on what happened with me, is, is put yourself out there. 
don't be don't be afraid to do stuff and um and be a bit sort of cheeky in a way just ask for it yeah just just put yourself out there and go for it um and if if you're good enough or you're lucky enough to be in the right place at the right time mm. you never know you might you might you might get it i don't know well you need to be good enough and lucky enough i think so oh, yeah, yeah. And you've got to work really hard. I, w- I work, well, I used to work incredibly hard. Um, yeah. Because I obviously had a day job um, working in a shop. And then I was trying to do this as a career. So it's like doing two full-time jobs. Um, and then when I did make the jump to do this just uh, as, as my only job, um, life did get a bit better. So what's what sort of hours and times are you working now as this is full time? Oh well, it's it's because I work for myself. It's it's what each job dictates really, on on what I dictate to myself. So if, um, if if I've decided to give myself to to put in a a concept that's ridiculously complicated with like twenty different transformers on it, and I've only got like a month to do the artwork, then that's my own fault, and I just have to work till midnight. <laughs> most days to get it done but then like you can on the same breath you can do you can do a concept that's actually relatively simple like the one division it's only got four characters on it Mm. you know with the reverse but the reverse is the same pose it's just they've got different costumes on so that's like actually a lot less um work intensive in that regard so you can spend more time really getting the colours right and really getting the feel right, which I think I actually, the WandaVision one is one I'm really happy with because I did actually allow myself the time with the concept to execute it like really, really, really good within the the time that I had. It's a couple of weeks usually. I was going to ask actually, have you you got a favourite piece of work? That's one. I'm really proud of the Empire Strikes Back poster I did as well Hmm. because not so much because of the artwork, just because it was the official 40th anniversary poster and it was up in all the cinemas and stuff in the US. So it was kind of like really legitimate. It's cool doing stuff digitally and putting it online, which is what most stuff is nowadays. Mm. But when you see one in an actual cinema, it's like when I did the John Carpenter stuff um, and then Studio Canal put them out in cinemas as well. So like independent cinemas all had the quads up. So I went into cinema and it was just there up on the wall. I was like, that for me, it was like, oh, that's real. Which nowadays it doesn't really matter because it's real if it goes online as well. But yeah, there's something, if it being in the actual foyer of an actual cinema is just like quite mind blowing still. And how many selfies did you get with them? Just a couple, two. <laughs> did. Did get my wife to take a picture of me. <laughs> Stood next to it. Yeah. And and how's that feeling about going into a into a DVD shop or a HMV and seeing a cover that you've created on a release? Oh, it's re- it's really surreal because the shop I used to work in was HMV. So it's really surreal because I'm like, if you go into an HMV or I go into the HMV that I used to work in, and I feel like that you get the memories of the working in the shop. Mm serving customers, all that sort of stuff, putting DVDs on shelves. And then, I, like you say, I can see some of my work sometimes. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I did do that. Weird. <laughs> it's real. I have a proper job. Yeah, I'm a grown-up. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> sort of. Sort of. Yeah, we won't, oh. won't go too far. won't go too far. Um, so one final question I wanted to ask before we, before we let you go away and, and carry on with this secret Marvel projects that you can't tell us what they are. No, definitely can't tell us. Mm-mm. Definitely can't tell us. Okay. Um, if somebody wants to get in touch with you, either that's to offer you work designing Star Trek posters or, or some other way, what's the best way for people to get in touch? Usually, probably Twitter. I mean, that's the thing. That, that's the platform I use most. But don't, di- don't direct message me so much unless I've already sort of responded to you in the past or you're somebody I know. I, I'll respond. I'm more likely to respond if you sort of at me publicly because then I, it, it, it public 
So if I don't respond, it's kind of like I'm being rude. <laughs> but if it's in a private message, no one knows that I'm being rude, so mm. I can ignore to my heart's consent. <laughs> I love the brutal honesty about that. Direct message me, fact. I might not respond. At me, I might not, I, I've yeah. kind of got to because everybody can see it. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much, Matt. Absolutely appreciate you you being here today. And as I say, as this goes out on the Friday of uh, TF Nation, I'll come yeah. along and see you any moment now. Weird. Brilliant, wicked. All right, thanks very much. Thanks. Yeah.